What up? You got a question for me? Anybody? Mm -hmm. you, oh. <laughs> Damn it. I guess nobody does. You got something to say? Vicente? What's this? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about San Felipe 250 2023. Another one I don't want to talk about. <laughs> Let's go way back to pre-running. One out pre-running, absolute disaster. This mini summit they threw at us. Rocks in the way, whole nine yards, but and then got a lot of good pre-running in and, and we did make it. It was a long, a long couple weeks. San Felipe is just a very uh, draining on your body because it's so whooped out. Just whoops, and then you turn a corner and there's more whoops. And then you go over a mountain and there's more whoops. Like it just, it just never ends. As soon as you think you get a break, whoops. That's how that went. But then, so Wednesday we qualified. Qualifying just didn't go how I had hoped. I made a couple big mistakes. Just didn't feel in my groove. And then there was all this confusion with the timing. And then they gave us sixth overall or sixth in class. So I took it. Uh, I wasn't pumped on it, but I did. I took it, so let's talk about race day. I'll give you a mile by mile. Full breakdown of really went down. So, start down on the Malcon, literally on the water, pretty rad. Um, right off the bat, speed zone, go through town, hop on the sand dunes, and just start cruising out of town. Uh, when you first hit the road, once you get through the sand dunes and out of town, it is just graded road, hard 90 right, graded road, hard 90 left, graded road, hard 90 right, graded road. It's very, it's, it's pretty simple. You're just kind of wide open. Then you wander your way through the dump a little bit and then you find yourself on the famous zoo road, which you make a hard left on it and it's just a big power pole line road with big whoops and people everywhere. And I mean everywhere. You're in the dust and you're just running kind of the sides and all you can kind of see is people on both sides and you're kind of just punching through the dust continuously with and then it'll clear up for a little and there's people in the middle of the road then you catch a one car there's more dust and then whatnot so cruising through there um at this point we're kind of just you know in the beginning my game plan was like hey we gotta we're six we can't let the leaders get too far ahead but we can't abuse our equipment too much you know there's a lot of dust in the beginning we got to settle in so kind of just start picking our way through all that uh made a right off zoo road and right at that point i saw uh there's a couple split lines and uh kiger he went the left line my preferred was right so i ran the right really hard um but still wasn't able to catch him uh but got close to him so at that point i knew i was you know all right here goes our first let's get our first one so kind of just hopped in a row with him and started tailing him um, so yeah, you go down there, then you kind of just wind along the freeway, just in a bunch of big bumps. Um, it's not very fun to be honest. And then, then there's some big G outs and, and you kind of wind down and you go down and you hit the freeway at one point. I'm trying to think if I had passed Kiger by then or not. No, I hadn't passed him yet. So we go down, we hit the highway and then there's a speed zone. We run right next to the highway for literally a hundred yards. Then we make a left. And Cameron Steele recently described this. This is some of the worst sections of Baja because there's about 10 lines and they're all just miserable square edge whoops that are just, you're in these tight, they're, none of them are perfectly straight and it's just, you just can't get in a group and it's really annoying. So, came out of there and the preferred line for this race was the immediate first right. And I had a feeling we were all stacked up. We had just gotten splits from one of our, you know, chase guys right there on the highway. Everyone's stacked on top of each other, like just, you're sitting in everyone's dust. Everyone, you know, everyone's just piled up. So I figured everyone's going right. So they all went right. So I stayed straight on this line I had. It was kind of the middle line of the 10, but there was about one, it was a middle line. Then you cut right and you're about, almost to the far right, and then eventually you cut over to the far right. And so I just started hammering through that. Whoops were a little bigger there compared to the far right line, but I had some clean air. 
it wasn't perfectly clear, but we started just charging through that. Off to the right, I saw I passed Kyger, then I kept charging, then I passed Ray, and so I was like, all right, this is good. And we passed a couple one cars just in that line. So at that point, I was like, kind of, oh, this is, all right, good, good move. Took the rough line, used those Fox shocks to really make them work. Um, so got through that, and then, so it's just rough, chewed up, and then you go to another spot where there's a couple lines everywhere, start charging through there. Um, I think we, at that point, we had caught a couple slow trophy trucks. So they stayed on the main line. My preferred line was the far right, but it's a little longer, but smoother. So, especially since they were on the main line, I took that past one trophy truck. Um, and so that's, you know, kind of high speed. And then you go through these big kind of whooped out giant rolling hills for a sec. So it went through there. Um, and at that point hit a VCP and then I kind of just skirt the far right. And at that point I could see Justin Davis. And so we get into El Chinero um, where you cross the highway, a little bit of a speed zone. So hop in the speed zone just to go over the highway. So we're not going crazy going over the highway because there's people everywhere. And I see Justin Davis right there and I'm like, okay, he's our next one. Let's do it. And so right there you go about half a mile. And the main race line is just whoops, and it's dead straight with some rocks and stuff, but it's just this big whooped out road. Or you could take a split line, which pretty much everyone knows about, where you hook a hard right, go off track for a little, and then catch a power line road, which is nearly perfectly smooth, dead straight, and fast. That's usually the preferred line because it's comfortable, it's smooth, and it's just, you're just kind of wooded as fast as the truck will go. But we're on Justin Davis' bumper. We're getting close to him. He goes the right line, so naturally that means I gotta go the left line. So charging through all these whoops, just dancing around. They're not pleasant, but the truck takes it. Um, and it's pretty impressive with the Fox Live valve, like how fast we're able to just charge through that stuff. It's because actually getting the tires to the ground and allowing us to accelerate versus just bouncing around. So go through that, and at this point, you know, we're looking out to our right, we're looking out to our right, Justin Davis is right kind of parallel to us. So we're like, oh man, here we go. This is gonna be, you know, the lines are coming together, coming together, and we, they, we literally couldn't have timed it any worse. We come together literally like on top of each other, and I kind of give him some room, and then I charge in, because I kind of, I had to give him room because the way he was positioned, I was gonna wreck us both. So I give him some room, and then I'm like, I can't let him go though. So we go into this kind of G out and I just slam his back bumper, you know, like, hey, I'm here hoping, you know, that he's like, okay, and he'll let me by, but you know, racing most of the time in the front, that doesn't work, but tapped his bumper and he kind of, we both went through this G out all sketchily. And luckily that like kind of made his truck awkward and he went over to the right and it was kind of perfect like he pulled over. And I kind of just stayed in the main line and just trudged through these G out little things and went right by him. So at that point, picked off three. So now we're in third. So I was like, boom, this is by mile, it's mile 50. So I'm like, this is how, this is going good. This is good. This is what I like to hear. So then from there on, you go down through some real rough, rocky stuff, and then you make a left and you start going up a wash. This wash is uh, very um, kind of just rocky. It's just chewed up. It's been raced on a lot in the past. This is like our third time racing on it in the past year, so it's just chewed up. But then you hop into the main wash, um, which from there on, it's kind of just one line, and it's just this like pebbly wash, and you're kind of, it sounds so bad in the truck because you're just like, your front tires are like throwing rocks onto the rest of the truck. So you're like super high speed because there's some ruts to hold you, but it's just like, like it's, you're like sandblasting your truck. But so start running through there. And then at that point, um, the Cantina truck, they have a flat tire. They're off to the left. So we pass them. Start charging again, pass another class one car. Oh, actually, yeah, before we hopped in the tight part of the wash, I was battling with this one car. I was getting pretty annoyed, but luckily I took a split and was able to get around him, which he almost like didn't give it to me because we got really close because the split I took was longer and then he like came in and I was like, dude, just my truck's bigger. That one car you're gonna hurt, like you better let off, which I already caught him. So you're like, come on, just pull over. But 
we do that past cantina truck and at that point i just this wash you just get in a flow so we're just flowing through there drop through that and then you go through these big just wash out ravines at that point i catch a class one car give him a little love tap he gets out of the way um get by him and we're just in the groove get a split time hey mcneil's up on you so at this point we're second on the road um but mcneil still had some time you know he got out ahead a little and got some clean air and but we were close so we're picking along and then right when we hop out of this kind of nasty rough area and you hop on some of these faster graded roads boom left rear flat and i'm like dude all right this sucks because i'm picturing rays on our bumper i'm picturing everyone's like right there and we just passed those one cars which are always a hassle so i'm like gosh dang it i don't know i think i just clipped a little rock or something going through those rocky washes it's pretty easy to do Mike Kim gets out, changes it. It was like a 45 second tire change. It wasn't, no, it was 48 seconds, I think is what they said. Luckily, the only car that passes us is that class one car, which we had just passed, which I kind of nerfed him hard. So I was like, dang it, they're really not gonna let us by this time. Don't get passed by anyone, but we did lose about a minute of time roughly. And so now Jason McNeil is even a little more up. And at this point, you kind of drop into some washes and then it just gets really wide open and fast and you're kind of just letting the truck flow trying to just make up time on mcneil and be clean without getting any other flats because so you go through this first sandy wash there's not much rocks then you make a big left sweeper which actually there's a sick video bank could clip it in me passing some local some local like in the race course like bouncing in his little toyota and i'm in the race truck just railing the outside around him and like go right by him it's kind of you know out there making passes yeah. big 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 uh, big moves um so we go through there and then once you get through down there it's another just big wash and then you hop onto some harder pack stuff and it's just wide open kind of just easy cruising um, just try not to get a flat because there are some hidden rocks places and you're going so fast it is easy. Um, and we're, at this point we're kind of battling some dust with some trophy trucks and some one cars. And it's just, yeah, so go through there and then that drops you into Borrego. Borrego is just more cross grainy stuff. And then you jump over the highway. From that point it gets a lot faster, kind of opened up, just big whoops. Uh, that's like race mile 117, you jump the highway and then it's just high speeds all the way down to 127, which is where we did our fuel stop um, and tires. At this point, we're pretty close on time to McNeil. We get in, do an awesome stop in and out. Then you make a left, um, really just kind of some high fast stuff through some big cactuses like Choyas though. So it's rad cause you're going so fast and it's a really fun flowy section. But if you get any bit off, it's gonna be miserable. Then you make a hard left, hit a bunch more whoops. Then you hit a hard right, and you get into huge whoops. Sand whoops that are miserable. Like, I can't describe how gnarly these whoops were. Like, it, they literally were, like a whoop, you know, is normally like that, let's say roughly. These things were like this. Like, they had like edges, so we're hitting them going this way. And there's edges that are literally more than square. Like they are, and you're just And even with 40 inch Toyo tires, the best Fox shocks, like it was just miserable. So you get through that and then you make a hard left onto the new section, which we got one day to pre-run, which was supposed to be my rest day. So thank you. But so yeah, if you didn't know, a day before the race, we were supposed to go through a section called the Mini Summit. Ben can clip in the ones, that's the one where the rocks were. There's always log jams, it was extremely tight, rock crawling basically in trucks. It was gnarly. It was gonna be crazy. It was most likely gonna be a log jam. We knew this for a while, but they decided on the day before that we would no longer go around it, which was kind of frustrating because we had spent a lot of time pre-running we did some modifications to the truck. You know, I had to get an extra chase guys just to be in that area. So it was a little frustrating, but basically they said, hey, we're not, you're gonna run that, but you're gonna run an additional 20 miles. So you're gonna add 20 miles, which screwed us up. We had to move our pit, whole nine yards, and ultimately did ruin my race. But 
we won't talk about that yet. We'll get there in a little. But so we go through this. This section, um, kind of rough ridge line, just picking our way through there. Um, at this point, I'm catching a trophy truck. Um, kind of have to work my way through. Luckily, catch a split line, pass him, um, and then cruising our way through. And then this is just these big, wide open washes where you're kind of just wandering through. There's some lines, but basically there's one line that shortens it all out, so you just got to stay on there. And at this point, we're following an all-wheel drive trophy truck, which is really hard to pass in a spec truck because we catch them in the tight stuff, but they have the acceleration, they have 1200 horsepower, and they have four wheels digging, you know? And so at this point we catch them, and our last splits are like McNeil's right up front there, you're getting close to them, so we're now leading on time. But there's this trophy truck in between you guys, so like, let's try to get around them. And this trophy truck just really put up a heck of a fight. And he was putting up a lot of dust. And he was just fast enough that I couldn't catch him, but he was definitely slowing me down. And I just couldn't get him. Every line I wanted to take, because we didn't have a ton of time pre-running in there, but there was kind of this defined line. You know, he took, because it, it, it was the shortest, easiest route, because we didn't get a ton of time to pre-run. So I was just stuck behind this guy. In, it goes through these big washes and then it hops where we're kind of cross-graining across this, this sandy, dusty area. And I just couldn't see. It was horrible. And at the whole time I'm thinking, man, we're losing time. We're losing time. And we'd get close to their bumper, but we would just never have enough to get them. You know, we're short on horsepower. They come out of a corner and they're just like, oh, God, God. and we're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. like it's just, and you're just like, oh, because you get them in the braking zone, you get them in the corner, and then they just are like, point, shoot, horsepower, and you go. But, so we continue to fight our way through that. Um, and then somehow, one, they get around to one car, so now I'm battling a one car in addition. And we're going through this super tight tree section, just trying to pick our way through, because we didn't pre-run in a ton, so there's not a lot of good lines. No one burned in a good line. So we're kind of picking our way through, and then at this point, I thought I ripped part of my bumper off, so I was afraid to nerf anyone else. Um, I didn't want to cause more damage and like cause it to like wrap underneath. But luckily, I didn't actually damage it that bad from hitting the earlier cars, but I did think I did. So I, uh, I get close to this one car, and I'm trying to like let them know I'm there, but I'm trying not to nerf them. And then I'm like so, it's so dusty, I'm just following every move they make. So they end up pulling off for me, being very generous, so I appreciate it. But then I follow them off the trail. And before I realize it, so then I'm bushwhacking and then they're like, where's this guy doing? So they hop back on course and luckily, after hitting a couple small cactuses, I got in front of them again. At that point, start picking it up. But then, once again, right behind this trophy truck. So it's through these tight tree sections and then you turn left and you're kind of in a fast flowy wash and just sitting in this guy's dust and I just couldn't get around him. And then you turn hard right and it's a big straight road. In the beginning there's some really big washouts but then it gets to a point where it's just kind of, the main line is smaller whoops but it's a little windier and then the far left line is dead straight, just big whoops. And so I kind of like start picking my way through there and I'm just sitting in this dust and um, I finally get to a point where I know the left line's gonna be way bigger, but I think we'll be able to push through it. So I break off left. At this time, that same trophy truck breaks off left because he's in someone else's dust. And so now I'm like, this guy's cutting over on like a defined line, but it's a little slower. And I'm like, I can't deal with this anymore. So I just like point straight towards the line. I'm basically like, whatever to do, put me right in front of this guy. And trees, bushes, everything just doo, 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 doo. And just fully wide open, Mike's like, what are you doing? But I was so fed up with sitting in the dust. So pick that off, get up by that all wheel drive trophy truck. And I'm like, okay, we gotta go. Motor through that. Um, there's another trophy truck in that other right line. We stay in the left line, just in these big whoops, just straight. It was abusive. Get through there. From there, you jump into another wash, pretty rough. And then go down, cross around Zoo Road. Wander along the side of the mountains there, catch another trophy truck right around the dump, had a six foot line, passed another trophy truck, 
And then at that point, get a time split. They say, hey, McNeil's your next truck. You guys are close. He's about 20 seconds up. It's time to go to town. So you kind of skirt around the area end of San Felipe and then you hop on some big graded dirt, dead straight roads where you're kind of like straight, hard riding night and whatever. That point McNeil's doing a pit past him. So we're first on the road. Life's good. Cause in my in the way I'm thinking, McNeil started three minutes ahead of us physically. So he's got to, you know, we're, we're ahead on time. Uh, he's got to pass me if he wants to win this race. Um, and we're pretty far, you know, the two of us were out front. So at that point, you run down south of town, some big wide open sections, and then some really big wide open washes. And we keep getting splits and they're like, McNeil's literally 15 seconds behind you, which that means he's just sitting right on the edge of our dust. And we're charging hard. I'm like, dang, this guy's pushing. Like I thought he wouldn't be able to just stay on my bumper, like through some of the washes with the dust, but he was staying there. So we're just charging hard go through one big wash, it's just wide open. And then you come down and you make a final turn to go up a Mote wash, which that's wide open, but then gets a little tighter. At that point, um, just kind of picking some stuff off, going through there, and then it gets into some tight technical rock section climbs. At that point, I'm just kind of taking my time, but it's, it's technical rocks. And then it gets to some points where it's some gnarly little rock climbs. And unfortunately going through one of those little rock things, I slid and uh, got a flat tire, which at this point I was like, the only goal of mine was don't get a flat because McNeil is not gonna be able to pass us because we're at a high enough speed with the dust. Like it's, it's gonna be really hard for him to get to my bumper and go around me with all these rocks. But I get a flat, so I just wave him on by. And then I also wave on by that all wheel drive trophy truck because since all the wide open stuff, he had just caught the two of us. And so, I'm going, oh, this is not good. I'm, you know, a little bit of panic. So we drop back in, get the tire changed pretty quick. And it's just this technical stuff. And I'm sitting in this all wheel drive trophy trucks dust. And it's so technical. You just can't push. Cause if you do, you're going to make a mistake and you know, hurt the car or whatever. So go all the way down there. Um, jump into what, a Zufre wash, go down a Zufre. And I'm just sitting in this guy's dust just can't get close to them because it's so technical. It's a really tight technical wash with a lot of rocks. From there, you jump down on and you make a left on Old Porcius Road. And basically from here on, it's dead straight, big whoops with occasional G, like uh, washouts. And so I'm just charging through this because they get give me some split times and they're like, hey, McNeil's walking from you a little because McNeil all will drive me. And I'm sitting in this guy and he's going away because and so I'm just losing my mind going, oh man, this is costing us the race. I'm trying really hard to push through this guy's dust. We just didn't have it from him. So we're trying and boom, boom, just logging miles at this point. I'm like, all right, we just gotta keep, we gotta stay in this guy's dust enough that we don't make a mistake. Like we don't lose time because McNeil's gotta get three minutes on us and the likeliness of him getting three minutes on us in the next 40 miles is, or 30 miles isn't really huge so as long as we stay in this guy's dust we should be right there but we can't make any more mistakes so sand whoops sand whoops just plowing along and then all of a sudden boom McNeil's on the right with a flat tire and I'm like boom let's go like I'm a little excited Mike's a little excited but we're like all right keep it together we're, we're cool bro that's cool we're, we're good so we keep cruising through there Kind of get a little break in dust. We just kind of back her down because we were charging really hard trying to just make sure we caught McNeil. And then so you end of your final whoops and then you go through these little sand dunes and then you make a left and you're in town. Going through those sand dunes, um, we ran out of gas, which uh, definitely was frustrating because we were about I don't know. I don't know how many miles out of town, but we were right there. We were on the final stretch, and uh, yeah, we ran out of gas. I, you know, it's it's tough to say exactly what it was. We were definitely stretching it a little. I don't think we were fully stretching it to a point, but I think we just got some extremely bad gas mileage, and then maybe got shorted a little bit of fuel in our pit. But it was tough because the night before, when they changed the course, they added 20 miles after our pit so we had to move our pit the farthest we can move it but it was still yeah but yeah it was a heartbreaker at that point 
ran out of gas. Mike got out trying to talk to some locals, trying to find us some gas while our chase guys were scrambling, trying to get us gas. But where we were at was just kind of in a weird position as these sand dunes and we were really close to town, but at the same time, there was just no way to eat, access us very easy. And so then, yeah, we sat there for a little and then McNeil passed by and then everyone started passing by. So we were finally able to get some gas from uh, the guys at Vision Wheels happened to be in the area, just spectating. And with the help of some other locals and stuff and some, some kids in a UTV in a Polaris actually, um, they got us some gas and we got enough to got where we could get to the road and then our crew was right there and they had a dump can and they put an additional 10 gallons in and then we cruised into the finish and finished but um, it was a heartbreaker to say the least. It hurt, like really hurt. It uh, it's a painful one but it was a learning experience and uh, we'll grow from it but uh, I'm really I'm really getting tired of these uh, <laughs> these bummed out uh, race recaps. <laughs> but that's a wrap on kind of San Felipe. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. I'm sure everyone will have questions and tell me how we couldn't have ran out of fuel, but in the end we did. So nothing we can do now. We'll change it, we'll build better procedures and uh, we'll go forward. Now we go for the San Felipe. We still finished. I think we ended up 10th, so we're not you know, we could have been 43rd because there was 43 of us. So it didn't end up, you know, still have a decent spot for the 500 to start. And as you can see, the guys are prepping behind us and it's time to start getting ready for Baja 500. So that's all. As always, like, subscribe. If you have any other questions, drop them below and maybe I'll answer them. If you have any other suggestions, yeah, share this with your friends. Show them. That's it. That's a wrap. Well, I'm not sure what we're talking about here, but if it's this race team, it's a pretty good race team. I think it's a pretty good race truck. Driver? Hey, he's a kid, but he's doing a really fast job. Okay, what do you want to say? What? You got a question for me?